हेलो डियर स्टूडेंट सो यू पी एस सी सी सैट ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू क्वेश्चन पेपर डिटेल एक्सप्लेनेशन इज हेयर एंड रिगार्डिंग दिस पेपर इफ आई टॉक अबाउट आई वुड से दिस पेपर वॉज नॉट दैट टफ आई मीन इफ वी कंपेयर दिस पेपर विद ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वन सो इन कंपेरिजन ऑफ ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वन दिस पेपर वॉज नॉट दैट टफ दिस पेपर आई वुड से दिस पेपर वॉज अ मॉडरेट पेपर सम क्वेश्चन वर वेरी लेंदी एंड सम क्वेश्चन वर एक्चुअली ईजी राइट एंड here like if i talk about the questions of maths and reasoning total they have given around 53 questions from maths and reasoning and out of those 53 questions uh i would say if you have followed my videos if you have followed my notes if you have followed my telegram channel then around 35 to 40 questions you could manage easily in the examination and uh, most of my students they are actually very thankful to me today they are saying sir whatever you have taught in the class uh, like directly came in the question paper so they are actually very happy with this question paper so guys uh, let's start with the discussion and uh, once again it is my disclaimer that all the questions of mine may not be correct and uh, guys please don't waste your too much time in the analysis of these question papers like for too many days just give one or two days for the analysis of these papers and then please uh, please start with the uh, question i mean the preparation of mains right because anyways whether you are qualifying this paper or you are not qualifying this paper you have to eventually prepare for the mains also fine and obviously like in this time you are not going to prepare for the prelims of 2023 you have to prepare for the mains only so in any case you have to prepare for the mains so please go for the preparation of mains uh just after like one or two days that's it right don't waste much time of your in the analysis of these papers like prelims question paper so guys let's start with the solution so this is question number 1 uh i mean uh, the set that i have got there this was question number 4 and before it three questions were from passages right passage i'm not going to solve because my english is not i mean my english is so bad actually i'm i'm really poor in english So anyways let's start with the, the first question the question is what is the value of x in the sequence what is the value of x in the sequence 20 10 10 1 uh, 15 30 75 and question mark so this is what 20 into half this becomes 10 10 into 1 this becomes 10 10 into 1.5 this becomes 15 15 Into two, this becomes thirty. Thirty into two point five, this becomes seventy-five. So obviously now it will be seventy-five into three. So this is two twenty-five, right? So here the answer is two twenty-five. D option is the correct choice for this question. All right, everyone. So this was a simple question. If it is get clicked, and if it it is not getting clicked, please leave this question. and just come after 15 20 minutes again to this question if it is get clicked then it is fine and if it is not getting clicked then just leave that question again and come after it in 15 minutes but all the time when you are trying this question just give only 15 to 20 seconds and if it is getting clicked then very good if it is not getting clicked then leave it and come again after some time right but don't give 15 20 seconds i mean don't give more than 15 20 seconds every time in this question fine okay guys Now let's move to the next one. Next question, friends. This question is actually a very, very lengthy question, and and it is not at all an advisable question in the examination, right? I could solve this question, but I I took so many, I mean, so much of time of mine, and uh, after solving this question, I was like thinking, why did I solve this question? Because I should not have solved this question. and i should not even motivate to solve these type of questions to my students right in fact this much lengthy question obviously when you are trying to read this question you will give around 1 to 2 minutes and when you are trying to comprehend this question you will take around 1 to 2 minutes more right and after that when you are solving this question you will take around 10 to 15 minutes might be right so please don't try to solve these type of questions i don't know why upsc is asking such um such uh, such time wasting questions i should say I have solved this question and I got the answer as seven four one two five eight nine. This was the number. This is the required number. And according to the question, the question is 
for the sum of the middle three digits in the number. Middle three digits, right? So these are middle three digits because two digits and two digits like we can leave two digits from here and two digits from here. So middle three digits we are getting as one to five. So what is the sum? So one plus two plus five. This is eight. Right. So here A option is the correct choice. But friends, I won't be. I mean, I won't be able to explain this question in this video because the thing is, this question is too lengthy to explain. Right. Anyways, uh, when you will check this uh, answer of mine, it will be satisfying all the condition of the question. Okay. So it is not at all advisable to solve these type of questions. Okay, fine. I thought, you know, you know, <laughs> you know what? Initially, I thought this is a passage. This is a, like <laughs> this is a reading comprehension passage. But when I started reading, I thought, oh, it is a maths question. <laughs> so, anyways, now let's move. Uh, after that, question is two friends X and Y start running, and they run together for 50 minutes in the same direction, and reach a point. X turns right and runs 60 meters. While y turns left and runs 40 meters. Okay, so it means what this question belongs to direction sense, huh? Right. So let's say this is this is the point where both of them are together, and after that, x turns right and runs 60 meters. X turns right and runs 60 meters. This is x, and y turns left and runs 40 meters. So y turns left and runs 40 meters. Okay. Then x turns left and runs 50 meters. x turns left and runs 50 meters. Okay. And stops. While y turns right and runs 50 meter and then stops. Okay. y turns right and runs 50 meters and then stops. How far are the two friends from each other now? So guys, this is what this is 60 plus 40, right? So 60 plus 40 is what 100. So they are now 100 meters apart from each other, right? This is the answer. They are now 100 meters apart from each other. The answer is 100 meter. A option is the correct choice. All right. Okay. This was an easy question. Everybody should attempt this. Okay, now let's move to the next question. Next question says, which date of June 2099 among the following is Sunday? Which date of June 2099 among the following is Sunday? All right, so 2099. Guys, you know, like there is a concept in calendar where we, we can find the day, uh, the day, right? We can find the weekday on the given date. So this question will be solved using that concept only. So this is 2019, sorry, 2099, right? 2099 will be segregated as 2000 plus 98 plus we will traverse in like 99th year. So 99th year is we, we need to go to June. So this is January, February, March, April, May, and June, right? So guys, uh, like in 2000, we have zero odd days. And in these 98 years, how many leap years and how many ordinary, year, ordinary years we have? So we have 24 leap years and 74 normal years, right? So in this 24 leap years, we have 48 odd days and here we have 74 odd days. And in January, how many odd days will be there? It is the January of 2099. This is what this is 2099. So how many odd days will be there in January? We have three odd days in January. We have zero odd days in February. We have three odd days in March, two odd days in April three odd days in March and in June we have to write according to the number, right? So just add them first and then we will decide how many days should we write in June, okay? 
So this is what? This is 48 plus 74. 48 plus 74 is what? 48 plus 74 is 122. 3 plus 3 is 6. 6 plus 3 is 9. 9 plus 2 is 11. So 122 plus 11 is 133. Right? 133, if you divide by 7, obviously the remainder is 0. Okay, because 19 into 7 is 170, uh, sorry, 133. Right? 19 into 7 is 133. So, here remainder is 0. So, this is 0 odd days. 0 odd days, right? So, if this is 133, then obviously we have to add 7 to it to make 0 odd days. We have to add 7 to it to make 0 odd days because Sunday is corresponding to 0 odd days. Right? So, we have to make 0 odd days over here. So, 133 we have already got. 133 plus 7 will be 0. So, obviously in June we have to consider 7 days. So, the answer is 7th June 2099. Okay? Fine. Now, let's move to the next question. Next question says a bill of rupees 1840 is paid in the denominations of rupees 50, 20 and rupees 10 notes. 50 notes in all are used. Total we have used 50 notes. Consider the following statements. 25 notes of rupees 50 are used and the remaining are in the denominations of rupees 20 and 10. So everyone Total the bill is what? Rupees 1840. This is the total bill that we need to pay. And we are using 25 notes of rupees 50. So if we are using 25 notes of rupees 50, we are actually paying what? We are actually paying 1250 rupees. Right? And still, how much, uh, I mean, uh, how many rupees are still left? How much amount is left? So this is 1840 minus 1250. Okay? So, this is approx 5, I mean this is actually 590 rupees is left, right. And now we have 20 rupees denomination and 10 rupees denomination. Total, we are actually using 50 notes only, 25 notes already being used. So, 25 notes are still left. So, if we are using all 25 notes of rupees 20, then also, I mean, then we can pay only rupees 500 and the total bill is of rupees 590. I mean total bill is, is of rupees 1840, 1250 we have already pay and the remaining is 590 rupees. But when we are using all the notes of rupees 20, then also, then only we can pay, I mean, even then we can pay rupees 500. So total bill cannot be paid using this combination. So first statement is not correct. Right, question is saying, which of the above statements, this is typing error, which of the above statements are not correct? Okay, so first is not correct. Okay. The second one is 35 notes of rupees 20 are used and the remaining are in the denomination of rupees 50 and 10. 35 notes of rupees 20. 35 into 20 is what? 700. Okay. And now we are left with 15 notes. If we are using all 15 notes of rupees 50, then we can pay only rupees 750. So, 750 plus 700, this is 1450, right? We need to pay rupees 1840. So, 1840 cannot be paid by using this combination, right? Now, let's talk about the third statement. 20 notes of rupees 10. So, 20 notes of rupees 10, it means 200 rupees. And we are still left with 1640 rupees because total 1840 rupees, rupees have to be paid. So, 200 we have paid already, so 1840 is left. So now 1840, so actually 30 notes are still left because 20 notes we are used, we have used. So 30 notes are still left. So 30 into 50, this is 1500, right? Actually 1640 was left, but we can only pay 1500. So even with this statement also, we cannot make the complete payment. So here question is saying which of the above statements are not correct. So none of the above is correct. So statement number 1, 2 and 3. None of the above statement is correct. So here D will be the correct choice. 
All right, everyone. The correct answer is D. Okay. Now let's move to the next question. Next question says, which number among them is the smallest? All right. So this is two raised to the power forty, three raised to the power twenty-one, four raised to the power eighteen, and eight raised to the power twelve. So two raised to the power two raised to the power eighteen, and here two raised to the power three raised to the power twelve. So this is what this is two raised to the power thirty-six, and this is two raised to the power thirty-six again. And uh, this is this is three raised to the power twenty one, and this is two raised to the power forty. All right. So friends, in these numbers, obviously two raised to the power forty is greater than two raised to the power thirty six, and this is like these two numbers are same. So now we need to check among two raised to the power thirty six and three raised to the power twenty one. Right. Two raised to the power thirty-six and oh sorry, three raised to the power twenty-one and two raised to the power thirty-six. Which of them is smaller? All right. So two raised to the power thirty-six and three raised to the power twenty-one. So this number is already I mean given in the question as four raised to the power eighteen and this is three raised to the power twenty-one. So guys. If we compare these two numbers, so obviously this number will be smaller, three raised to the power twenty-one. Fine. So three raised to the power twenty-one will be smaller. So obviously among these three numbers, two raised to the power thirty-six is smaller, and among these two numbers, two uh, three raised to the power twenty-one is smaller. So we can see in all these four numbers, three raised to the power twenty-one is smaller, is smallest among them. Fine. It is B option is the correct choice. All right, everyone. Fine. Okay. Now let's move to the next question. Next question says the digits one to nine are arranged in the three rows in such a way that each row contains three digits, and the number formed in the second row is twice the number formed in the first row. The number formed in the third row is thrice the number formed in the first row. Repetition of digits is not allowed. Okay. Repetition of digits is not allowed. All right. If only three of the four digits two, three, seven, and nine are allowed to use in the first row, how many such combinations are possible to arrange in the three rows? Guys, this question is actually a lengthy one, right? This question is a lengthy question. So in the examination, I won't suggest you to solve these type of questions. But yes, I have solved this question because I needed to. Uh, I mean, because I wanted to give the solution. So here, first of all, uh, total two, three, seven, nine. These numbers can be used. So how many choices do we have? We have two thirty-seven, two thirty-nine, and then two seventy-three, and then two ninety-three. Okay. And then two seventy, two seventy nine, and then two ninety seven. Okay. So these numbers we can use as a first row. These these numbers we can use in the first row. And uh, one more number we can use like three twenty seven. Right, three twenty-seven we can also use. So, guys, here I have like checked writing all the numbers. So, if we use two seventy-three as the first number, first row, then second row will be double of this. So, double of two seventy-three is five forty-six, and triple of two seventy-three is eight hundred nineteen. So, this is the first combination. All right, this is the first combination, and the second combination was. The second combination was. Uh, I have already like did that question, so this is three twenty seven, and uh, double of this is 
654 and triple of this is 981 right so everyone here what the question is saying the repetition of digits is not allowed right so this is what this is 273 so all the digits from 1 to 9 we need to use so see 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 so here we have used all the numbers from 1 to 9 and now let's come to second combination 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and 9 right so we have used all the numbers from 1 to 9 okay everyone fine now it is clear so I think only two combinations are possible right okay everyone so here the correct answer is C choice all right okay now let's move to the next question next question is saying x and y run a three kilometer race along a circular course of length 300 meters their speeds are in the ratio of 3 is to 2 if they start together in the same direction how many times would the first one pass the other the start off is not counted as passing okay so here the question is saying their speeds are in the ratio 3 is to 2 all right so just assume that their speeds are 300 and 200 right so 300 meter per let's say minute just assume that their speeds are 300 meters per minute and 200 meters per minute okay so when the first one will run 300 the second one will run 200 I mean the first one will will complete one round of the track and he will reach to the starting point but the second one will not be able to reach to the starting point so when uh, first one will cover 600 second one will cover 400 and when first one will cover 900 the second one will cover 600 right so guys this is the time when for the first time they will be meeting to this meeting on the starting point the when the first one will be covering 900 meters obviously he will be taking three complete rounds of the track and he will be on the starting point and second one will be taking two complete rounds on the track of the track and he will be again on the starting point fine so when first one will be covering 900 meter and second one will be covering 600 meter they will be on the starting point similarly when first one will be covering 900 more it means 1800 the second one will be covering 600 more it means 1200 so this is one this is two right and again when first one will be covering 900 more it means 1800 plus 900 is 2700 and 600 600 and 600 is 1800 okay so this is what it means first time when the first one will be covering 900 second one will be covering 600 second time when first will be covering 19 uh, sorry 1800 sec first one will be covering 1800 and second one will be covering 1200 and third time when first will be covering 2700 and second will be covering 1800 right and after that only 300 meters are left because the total track is of 3000 meter so 2700 till 2700 a has covered and b has covered 1800 and they will be on the starting point so obviously they are meeting only three times right they are meeting only three times and they are meeting on the starting point itself okay everyone fine so this is the answer right okay now let's move to the next question next question is if the order of the letters in the English alphabet are reversed and each letter represents the letter whose position it occupies then which of the following 
represents Lucknow. All right, they are saying each letter in English alphabet is reversed in according to their position. Reverse with respect to their position. Okay, fine. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. Right. So now this is Lucknow. So L, U. So Lucknow. L is O, U is F, C is X, K is P, K is P, M is N is M, O is L, and W is D. So this is O F X P M L D. O F X P M L D. It is D option. All right, everyone. This is D option. So, correct choice is D option. Fine. This was an easy question. Everybody should attempt this question. Now let's move to the next one. Next one is in a tournament of chess having 150 entrants, a player is eliminated whenever he loses a match. Okay, this scheme is known as knockout. If you lose one game, you are out of the tournament. Right. This scheme is known as knockout. Question is, it is given that no match results in a tie or a draw. How much, how many matches are played in the entire tournament? See, in the knockout, if there are n teams are participating, total n minus 1 matches are there. Okay. So here, 150 teams are participating. So 150 minus 1, 149 matches will be played. The answer is 149. C choice is the correct answer. Okay, now let's move to the next one. Next question is, how many three digits natural number without repetition of digits are there such that each digit is odd and the number is divisible by five? Total odd digits are one, three, five, seven, nine. We have total five odd digits. Okay. And they are saying all the digits are odd and the number is divisible by five. So obviously five is being used in the units digit. Okay. And after that, this place and this place are left. So for this place, we have four choices. And for this place, we have three choices, right? So the answer is four into three total 12. And for this place, actually, this is not five. This is only one choice, right? This is one choice. And th these are four choices. These are three choices. So answer is four into three into one. So this is 12. 12 such numbers are possible. All right, everyone. The answer is 12 such numbers are possible. Fine. Okay. Now let's move to the next question. Next question is saying, consider the question and two statements given below. This question belongs to data sufficiency topic. Question says, is X an integer? The question is, is X an integer? Okay, fine. Now read the statement number one. And when we read a statement number one, read a statement number one alone. And when we come to statement number two, read a statement number two alone. Fine. Okay. So read a statement number one. X by three is not an integer. Okay. Guys, X by three is not an integer. So if we assume x is equal to 1, then 1 by 3 is not an integer. And if we assume x as 1 by 3, then x by 3 won't be an integer. So it means x can be integer also or x can be non-integer also for the first statement. Okay, I repeat, x can be integer also and x can be non-integer also according to the given statement first. Fine. Now talk about the second statement. 3x is an integer. So if we consider x as 1 by 3, 
So 3x will be 1 and if we consider x as 1 then 3x will be 3 right. So here x can be non-integer or x can be integer. So from statement number 1 alone we can't give the answer and from statement number 2 alone we can't give the answer because in both the cases x can be integer or x can be non-integer also. Okay. So here statement number 1 alone is not sufficient to answer this question. Statement number 2 alone is not sufficient to answer this question and even if we club these two statements together then also we won't be able to find the answer. Right. So here correct answer is D. Both the statements are not sufficient to find the answer. Alright, now let's move to the question number, I mean next question. Next question says the increase of the price of a certain item was 25%. Then the price was decreased by 20%. And then again it is increased by 10%. What is the resultant increase in the price? Guys, it is a very simple question. So 100 and increment of 25% will make it 125, right? And the decrement of 20% will make it again at 100 and then the increment of 10% will make it 110, right? So finally, it is the increment of 10%. This is the increment of 10%. All right, everyone, this is the increment of 10%. Okay, now let's move to the next question. Next question says the letters A, B, C, D, E are arranged in such a way that there are exactly two letters between A and E. How many such arrangements are possible? Alright. So these are five letters A and E. So there are two letters between A and B. So A can be here. I mean A can come to the first position or if A is written first, fine. Or A can come to second position. It is like this. Okay. So guys here, 1, 2 and 3. So this is factorial 3. And A, E can interchange their position. So this is 2. And here also 1, 2 and 3. So factorial 3. And A, E can interchange their position. So this is again 2. Just add them. So factorial 3 is what? 6, 6 into 2. And this is 6 into 2. Just add them. So this is 12 plus 12. So this is 24. So total 24 arrangements are possible. Right? The answer is 24 arrangements are possible. Okay guys. This is a simple question. But yes, you should be like, you should be comfortable enough in the concepts of permutation and combination. Then only you will be able to understand what are factorials and what are the arrangements and all. Fine. Okay. Now let's move to the next question. Next question again, it belongs to data sufficiency only. Next question says, consider the question and two statements given below. Is Z brother of X? Okay. Okay. Statement number one says, X is brother of Y and Y is brother of Z. X is brother of Y and Y is brother of Z. X is brother of Y. It means X is male. And Y is brother of Z. It means Y is also male. But what is the gender of, uh, gender of Z? We, it is not given in the question, so we can't say anything. So according to statement number one, the gender of Z is not defined. So we cannot say Z is brother or Z is sister. Fine. Nothing can be said about it. Statement number two, alone, X, Y, Z are siblings. Yeah, this is also correct. X, Y, Z are siblings. I mean, in statement number two, we can do like this. Fine. In statement number 2, x, y, z are siblings. Here, gender of any person is not given. Okay. So, statement number 1 alone is not giving you any concrete information about the gender, uh, gender of z. Statement number 2 alone is not giving you any information about the gender of z. So, you can't say z is brother of x. Right. The question is z is brother of x. So, you can't say. So, here, Nothing can be said about the gender of X, even if we are clubbing these two statements together. So here this answer is, I mean, this answer is uh, not possible. I mean, we can't give the answer even if club these two statements together. So here D option is the correct choice. Both statement number one and two are not sufficient 
to answer the question. All right, everyone. Fine. Now let's move to the next question. Next question talks about on one side of a 1.01 kilometer long road, 101 plants are planted at equal distance for equal distance from each other. Okay. See everyone, if 101 plants are being planted, then obviously we have 100 intervals. Why? Because for two plants, let's say there are two plants, P1 and P2. So here we have only one interval. For three plants, P1, P2 and P3. So for three plants, we have two intervals. For four plants, so for four plants, this is P1, P2, P3 and P4. So for four plants, we have three intervals, right? So similarly, if 101 plants are to be planted, then total we have 100 intervals. All right, everyone, total we have 100 intervals. Question is saying 100, sorry, 1.01 kilometer long road. So 1.01 kilometer. If we convert this into meter, then we have to multiply multiply this by 100. So this is 1010 meter, right? So 1010 meter is equally distributed among 100 intervals. So 1010 divided by 100. So this is 10.1. This is the length of one interval, right? This is the length of one interval length of one interval or you can say gap between two plants right or gap between two plants all right so now total five plants they are asking what is the total distance between five consecutive plants five consecutive plants right so if we have five plants then total we have four intervals if we have five plants, then total we have four intervals. So this is 10.1, 10.1, 10.1 and 10.1. So 10.1 into four. So this is 40.4 meter. All right. The answer is 40.4 meter. The correct answer is B option. All right, everyone here. The answer is B option 40.4 meter. All right. Okay. Now let's move to the next question. Next question is ABC are three places such that there are three different roads from A to B and four different roads from B to C. All right. So ABC are three places let's say it is like this one, two, three. So three roads from A to B and four roads from, from B to C. One, two, three, four. So this is three and four. Okay. And after that, and three different roads from A to C. Okay. Three different roads from A to C. So let's say this is A to C. One more A to C and one more A to C. Okay. So total they are asking how many different ways one can travel from A to C using these roads. So this is three into four plus three. So total 12 plus three, 15 roads are there. 15 ways are possible to go from A to C. Total 15 ways are there from A to C or 15 routes are there from A to C. All right. Okay. Now let's move to the next question. Next question is A has some coins. He gave, he gives half of the coins and two more, two more to B. B gives half of the coins and two more to C. C gives half of the coins and two more to D. The number of coins D has now is the smallest two digit number. A smallest two digit number means what? It is 10. A smallest two digit number means 10. 10. How many coins does A have in the beginning? All right. So A has in the beginning is what? 
start with 10. D has 10 coins. Okay. Question is saying what? C gives half of the coins and two more. So it means C has actually this 10 is what? This 10 is 8 plus 2. Right. It means C has what? C has 16. So half of 16 is 8 and then two more is giving. So C has 16. Right. And similarly, what is happening with C? B gives half of the coins and two more. Okay, it means B has what? 16 minus 2 is 14. 14, double of 14 will be 28. So B has 28 coins. Right? And then 28 minus 2 will be 26. And double of 26 will be 52. So A has 52 coins. Right, everyone? So A has 52 coins to start with. I mean, in the beginning, A has 52 coins. Clear? So this was the simple question. So you are using in reverse manner. I mean, you can use uh, the value 10 and just go in reverse direction. So you will be easily find the answer. Or you can do one more thing. You can use the options also. Fine. So, but anyways, this method is more convenient by using this, I mean, by using the reverse process. Okay. So guys, uh, the answer is D option 52. All right. Now let's move to the next question. Next question is in the series A, B, sorry, A, A, B, A, B, C, A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D, E, which letter appears at the hundredth place? Alright, so this is A, A, B, A, B, C, A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D, E. It is like this. Okay, so 1, 2, 3, I mean 1 alphabet, 2 alphabets, 3 alphabets, 4 alphabets, 5 alphabets and so on. So they are asking 100th place. So guys, you know what, if we add them, this is 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4. So this is what, this is actually summation of n. Oh, all right. So summation of 13, we all know summation of 13 is what? 13 into 14 divided by 2. So this is 91. Okay. Summation of n, I mean the formula is summation n is equal to nn plus 1 divided by 2. Or you can say sigma n is equal to nn plus 1 divided by 2. So summation 13 we all know is 91. So till 91, we can write like this. After that, we are left with nine more alphabets. Okay. So nine more alphabets we need to write. So hundredth alphabet will be the ninth alphabet. Hundredth will be equal to the ninth alphabet in English alphabets. Right? So, ninth alphabet is what? See guys, E J T we all know. So, J is 10th. So, I is 9th. I is 9th. The answer is I. Here, C will be the correct choice. Alright? Okay, everyone. This is again a simple question. I mean, simple uh, example of number system. But yes, you should be very much comfortable of these type of question, then only you will be able to solve this question in this quick uh, manner in the examination. Okay. Now let's move to the next question. Next question is three persons A, B, C, three persons A, B, C are standing in a queue, not necessary in the same order. There are four persons between A and B, seven persons between B and C. If there are 11 persons ahead of C and 13 percent behind A, what could be the minimum number of persons in the queue? Guys, here we need to check all the possible combinations and I have checked it already. So the combination that I have got, let me tell you is, question is, there are four persons between A and B. So four persons between A and B. So one, two, three, four four persons between A and B and five, sorry, seven persons between B and C. So one, two, three, four, five. 
and 6, 7. So this is C. After that, the question is saying, if there are 11 persons ahead of C, 11 persons ahead of C, okay? So this is what, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. After that, 3 more. So 11 persons ahead of C. And they are saying 13 persons behind A. 13. So 1, 2, 3 and 10 more. Right. So 10 more. Okay. After that, they are saying how many members are there? How many persons are there in the queue? So guys, this is 3. And then this is 5. Then this is 4. And then this is 10. Okay, so 10 plus 4, 14, 14 plus 5, 19, 19 plus 3 is 22. So in this manner, we are getting 22 persons in the queue. This is the correct choice. A, A option. A option is the right answer. But fine, uh, but friends here, uh, obviously, you need to check all the possible combinations that you can make. But yes, they are asking about the minimum number. So obviously, you have to do such uh, like permutations and combinations you have to take. Fine. Okay. Now let's move to the next one. Next question is how many seconds in total are there in X weeks, X days, X hours, X minutes and X seconds. Guys put X as one. The smallest value of X. So one week. One day. 1 hour, 1 minute, and 1 second. We need to add total number of seconds in it. Alright. So in 1 second, obviously we have 1 second. In 1 minute, we have 60 seconds. In 1 hour, we have 60 into 60 seconds. In 1 day, we have 24 into 60 into 60 seconds. And in one week, we have 7 into 24 into 60 into 60 seconds. Right? Now just add all of them. Alright. So if we add all of them, what we are going to get? See, this is what 60 into 60 uh, into 24 into 7. 24 into 7 is 168. 168 into 3600. 60 into 60 is 3600. Plus, second one, 24 into 3600. 3600 into 24. Third one is 3600. After that, 60. After that, 1. So, in these three numbers, first three numbers, we can take 3600 common. So, 3600 common. So, this is 168 plus 24 plus 1 and plus 61 more. Alright, so 168 plus 24 is 192, 192 plus 1 is 193. Okay, so 3600 plus 193 plus 61. Alright, so when we do the ca complete calculations, we are getting 694861. 694861. Guys, here we have taken X as 1. Right. So 694861. Obviously, this is D option is the correct choice. We are taking X as 1. So if you put X as 1, so in the D option, we'll get the answer. Guys, this question was a lengthy question, a calculative question actually. But yes, if you have time, then definitely you can go for this question. Because here you will find the sure shot answer. Okay. All right. Now let's move to the next one. Next question is saying, this is a question based on blood relation. P, Q, R, S, T and U are six members of a family. R is the spouse of Q. Okay. R is the spouse of Q. All right. But who is husband? Who is wife? Uh, we can't say. After that, U is the mother of T and S is the daughter of U. U is the mother of T. 
U is the mother of T. U is the mother. It means U is female. U is the mother of T. And S is the daughter of U. S is the daughter of U. S is the daughter. S is the daughter means S is female. Okay. All right. After that, P's daughter is T. P's daughter. P's daughter is T. It means U and P are husband wife. Here, P is male, P is husband and U is wife, female. P's daughter is T and R's son is P. R's son is P. It means what? R and Q are husband wife and their son is P. Alright. Okay. So, there are two couples in the family. Alright. Which one of the following is correct? Okay, Q is the grandfather of T. Guys, we can't say anything because gender of Q is not given in the question. Q is grandmother of T. Nothing can be said about the gender of Q. So, Q is grandmother or granddaughter, we don't know. R is mother of P. Gender of R, we can't decide. T is the granddaughter of Q. T is the granddaughter of Q. P's daughter is T. See everyone here, they are saying P's daughter is T. So it means T is female. P's daughter is T, right? They are saying in the question. So it means T is female. So T is the granddaughter of Q. Yes, that is very much sure. Yeah, D option is the correct choice. Okay, everyone. Fine. Now let's move to the next question. Next question is again, the question is from data sufficiency. Question says, consider the question and two statements given below in respect of three cities P, Q and R in a state. Question is, how far is city P from city Q? How far is city P from city Q? All right. City Q is 18 kilometers away from city R. Guys, Q is 18 kilometer away from R. Alright, from statement number 1 alone, they are saying Q is 18 km away from R. It is okay. So, statement number 1 alone, we can't say the distance between P and Q. So, statement number 1 alone is not sufficient to find the answer. Okay. Now, statement number 2. P is 43 km from R. So, statement number 2 is talking about P and R. And the question is asking about P and Q. So, statement number 2 alone is not able to find the answer. Right. After that, when we club these two statements, actually we don't know the direction of these three cities. Are they situated in the straight line or are they situated in a triangle? I mean, how they are situated? This is not given in the question. They are situated in a straight line or they are situated like this, P, Q, R. Fine. So, we, we are not able to decide the distance between P and Q even if we club these two statements together. Right. So, both the statements are not sufficient to find the answer. D choice is the correct answer. D option is the correct choice, I mean. Fine. Here, D option is the correct choice. Alright. Now, let's move to the next question. After that, this question belongs to syllogism. Question says, Two statements followed by four conclusions are given below. You have to take the statements to be true even if they seem to be at variance from the commonly known facts. Read all the conclusions. Okay, just come to the question. All pens are books. All pens are books. Okay, fine. All pens are books. No chair is pen. Okay, no chair is pen. All right. Conclusion number one, all chair are books. All chair are books. No, it is not correct. Conclusion number two, some chair are pens. Mm, no, it is not correct. Conclusion three, all books are chairs. All books are chairs. No, this is not also correct. Conclusion four, no chair is a book. Yes, this can be said. 
no chair is book this can be true right but anyways let's come to the options which one of the following is correct only conclusion one no only conclusion two no third both conclusion three and conclusion four no it is not also correct none of the conclusion followed see everyone according to the given options we can say none of the conclusion follows fine because first three conclusions are not following that is for sure right okay so none of the conclusion follows all right okay everyone now let's move to the next question next question again from the same topic syllogism so question number 1 i mean statement number 1 some doctors are teachers some doctors are teachers so doctors are teachers after that all teachers are engineers all teachers are engineers all right fine third statement all engineers are scientists all engineers are scientists okay all engineers are scientists after that some scientists are doctors these are the conclusions first conclusion some scientists are doctors yeah it is correct second conclusion all engineers are doctors all engineers are not doctors no it is not correct third conclusion some engineers are doctors some engineer yeah it is correct so one and third is correct c option both conclusion first and third are correct c option is the correct choice all right okay everyone now let's move to the next question next question says eight students a b c d e f g and h sit around a circular table equidistant from each other facing the center of the table not necessarily in the same order b and d sit neither adjacent to c nor opposite to c a sits in between e and d and f sits in between b and h which one of the following statement is definitely correct okay everyone in this question i have uh, drawn the uh, possible seating arrangements and i have got three possible seating arrangements so i am showing all the arrangements in front of you so first seating arrangement that i have got from the given information is there are eight people 1 2 3 4 5 6 and 7 8 so there are eight people so question is saying a sits between e and d so a sits between e and d after that question is saying f sits between b and h f sits between b and h and after that b and d are neither in front of c nor opposite to c okay so here c will be here and obviously g will be here right so this is the first seating arrangement that we have got from the given information now the second seating arrangement that i have got from the given information is 1 2 3 4 5 6 and 8 question is saying a sits between e and d f sits between b and h and b and d are neither opposite to c nor adjacent to c so c will be here and then the rest one is g g will be here and then third third seating arrangement was third seating arrangement that i have got is just wait 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and 8 okay so third seating arrangement a sits between d and e okay after that f sits between sorry f sits between b and h so let's say this is h okay and after that b and d neither adjacent nor opposite to c so c will be here and g is here okay guys so there are three possible combinations that we have got from the given data all right so now the first 
क्वेश्चन इज विच वन ऑफ द फॉलोइंग इज डेफिनेटली करेक्ट द फर्स्ट चॉइस फर्स्ट ऑप्शन बी सिट्स बिटवीन ए एंड जी सो बी सिट्स बिटवीन ए एंड जी इन द फर्स्ट कॉम्बिनेशन बी इज नॉट सिटिंग बिटवीन ए एंड जी इन द सेकेंड कॉम्बिनेशन बी इज नॉट सिटिंग बिटवीन ए एंड जी एंड द थर्ड कॉम्बिनेशन बी इज नॉट सिटिंग बिटवीन ए एंड जी सो दिस वन इज नॉट करेक्ट सेकेंड वन इज सी सिट्स ऑपोजिट टू जी C sits opposite to G, so in first it is not correct because C sits opposite to H in first one, right? C sits opposite to H. In second, yes, it is correct. C sits opposite to G, but it is correct in one of the combinations, and in third combination C is not sitting opposite to G, right? So second one is correct, but not always correct. It is possibly it is true, right? Question is asking which one of the following is definitely correct. so this is also not correct after that e sits opposite to f e sits opposite to f so in the first choice in the first time in combination e sits opposite to f yeah it is correct but in second it is possible in second combination e sits opposite to b no it is not correct in third combination e sits opposite to c no it is not correct so third one is also correct but it is a possibility it might be correct in some of the combinations but it is not always correct it is not always true it is not definitely correct right so neither first is definitely definitely correct neither second is definitely correct nor third is definitely correct so the correct answer is none of these okay question is saying definitely correct right if the question is if the question were which of the following is possibly correct then obviously b would have been the correct choice and c would have been also be the correct choice right but they are asking which one of the following is definitely correct okay everyone so here the correct answer will be none of these according to me it will be none of these right i don't know what upsc is uh, uh, going to do with this question but according to me it will be none of these cause none of the given option is definitely correct fine so correct answer would be none of these all right everyone now let's move to the next question next question is five friends p q x y and z purchased some notebooks okay the relevant information is given below z purchased 8 more than x did so z is equal to x plus 8 after that p and q together purchased 21 so p plus q is 21 After that, five, uh, Q purchased five less than P, so Q is equal to P minus five. Okay, then X and Y together purchased twenty-eight, so X plus Y is equal to twenty-eight, and P purchased five notebooks more than X, so P is equal to X plus five. Okay, so guys, here with these two statements. uh this first and second these two statements i mean let me write, uh give the name 1 2 3 4 and 5 so by using second and third statement p plus q is equal to 21 and p minus q is equal to 5 p minus q is equal to 5 so if we are solving these two statements second and third so what we are getting p is equal to 13 and q is equal to 8 right because just add these two equations so q q will be cancelled so 2p is equal to 26 then p is equal to 13 so if p is equal to 13 then obviously q is equal to 8 okay so p is equal to 13 and q is equal to 8 so if we have got p as 13 So just by using this value in equation number five, we are getting x as eight. Okay. So if we are getting x as eight, just by using this value in equation number one, we are getting z is equal to eight plus eight, which is sixteen. Right. So once we are getting z as sixteen, and uh, uh, x plus y is given as twenty-eight. Okay. So y is equal to twenty. In equation number four, x plus y is given as twenty-eight. All right. So now let's come to the question. Question says, if each notebooks is priced rupees forty, then what is the total cost of the all the notebooks? 
So just add them, how many notebooks have been purchased on that day? So 20 plus 16, it is 36, 36 plus 16, it is 52, 52 plus 13 is 65. So total purchased notebooks were 65 and price of one notebook was 40. So 65 into 40 is 2600. Right everyone? The answer is 2600. Total cost of all the notebooks was 2600 rupees. All right everyone? Fine. So this is the answer. Okay. Now let's move to the next question. Next question is, a man started, a man is started from home at 14.30, 14.30 means 2.30 p.m. Right, 14.30 hours and drove to village. Okay, arriving there when the village, arriving there when the village clock indicated 15.15 hours. Okay, 15.15 means 3.15 p.m. All right, so 3.15 p.m. After that, after staying for 25 minutes, he drove back by a different route, length 1.25 times of the first route, at a rate twice as fast reaching at home at, at uh, 16 hours, at, it means 4 p.m. As compared to the clock at home, the village clock is. Okay, everyone, just wait. So this is 2.30 p.m. I'm writing it and this is 3.15 p.m. and this is 25 minutes stay and then 4 p.m. right so I'm just using the options right because I don't want to solve this entire question I will just use the options fine and since here this is 3.15 so I'll take 5 minutes first and then 10 minutes, right? 5 minutes slower, 5 minutes faster, and then 10, 10 minutes slower and 10 minutes faster, right? So guys, just assume here, like, let's start with D, 5 minutes faster, right? So question is what? As compared to the clock at home, the village clock is, so we are assuming the answer as 5 minutes faster, right? So it means what? If the village clock is 5 minutes faster, so when he reached at village, the village clock was indicating 3.15. So it means it was the actual time must be 3.10 p.m. at that time. He started at 2.30 p.m. and he reached there at 3.10 p.m. It means he reached there in 40 minutes. Correct everyone? I have just taken fourth option, right? So by using fourth option, fourth option is saying five minutes faster. So if the village clock is five minutes faster, it means, it means when the village clock was indicating 3.15, it must be 3.10, right? So he started at 2.30 and he reached at 3.10. It means he took 40 minutes for the for the entire journey, right? For onward journey, actually, I should say. Okay. After that, he took a stay of 25 minutes. So 3.10 plus 25 minutes. It means he started at 3.35 p.m right and he reached at 4 p.m. It means for return journey or for downward journey he took 25 minutes time. Guys it is clear? Okay. So 25 minutes. For onward journey he took 40 minutes and for return journey he took 25 minutes. So for downward journey he took 25 minutes. Right. But ideally you know what? Ideally he drove back by a different route which is 1.25 times lengthy than the first route. See everyone, 1.25 times means 25% more. 1.25 times means 25% more. 25% means 1 by 4th more. 1 4th extra. Right. So since if the route he has taken is 1 4th extra then obviously he should have taken one fourth time extra so here he is taking 40 minutes so 40 minutes one fourth of 40 minutes is what one fourth of 40 minutes is 40 by 4 which is 10 minutes so he should have taken 50 minutes for 
downward journey or for return journey if he maintain the same speed right but the question is saying he his speed is double this time so if he double the speed then time will be half then time will be half if he double the speed then time will be half so 50 minutes half of 50 minutes is 25 minutes right everyone so this data gets match right it means this answer is correct so village clock is 5 minutes faster than the actual time right everyone so this is the correct answer right in this type of question just use the options don't try to solve the entire question by using mathematics because it will be a lengthy question in the examination and in the examination the time is limited you never know in which option how much time will be required right so in these type of questions if you are solving these type of questions use the options don't show the knowledge of mathematics please right d option is the correct choice right everyone okay now let's move to the next one next question ask is asking a person x wants to distribute some pens among six children a b c d e f suppose a gets twice the number of pens received by b three times that of c four times that of d five times that of e and six times that of f what is the minimum number of pens x should buy so that the number of pens each one gets is an even number guys here we need to take the lcm of 2 3 4 5 6 because the number of pens received by a should be divided by 2 also 3 also 4 also 5 also and 6 also right so just take the lcm of 2 3 4 5 6 which is 60 so if a is getting 60 pens b will be getting half of it which is 30 c will be getting one third of it which is 20 d will be getting one fourth of it which is 15 e will be getting one fifth of it which is 12 and f will be getting one sixth of it which is 10 all right okay now read the question what is the minimum number of pens of x should buy so that the number of pens each one gets is an even number okay here d is not getting an even number so friends we need to multiply all the numbers by 2 so we have to start with 120 so 120 60 40 30 20, uh, 24 and then 20 now please add them right so this is what this is 12 60 180 180 and 40 is 220 220 is 30 220 plus 30 is 250 250 20 270 and then 24 so 294 so total number of pens will be 294 right everyone the answer is 294 correct answer is 294 all right everyone fine okay now let's move to the next one next question is saying six persons a b c d e and f are sitting equidistant from each other round a circular table facing center of the table all right there are six persons so a b i mean six persons are they are like this okay they are like this six persons okay question is what question who is sitting on the immediate left of a who is sitting on the immediate left of a fine now read statement number one statement number one b is sitting opposite to c and d is sitting opposite to e b is sitting opposite to c and d is sitting opposite to a so in this question i mean in this statement they are not talking anything about a question is who is sitting immediate left of a in fact the positions of only four members are given if the positions of fifth member were given then we we could have decided in fact right but here we cannot decide anything with the statement number one regarding the position of a fine now statement number two the statement number two is saying f is sitting on the immediate left of b f is sitting on the immediate left of b so statement number two alone is not talking anything about the position of 
right or who is sitting immediate left of a right now guys if we so statement number one alone won't give you the answer statement number two alone won't give you the answer state i mean so option a and option b are not correct now if we club these two statements together so let's start with option b f is sitting on the immediate left of b so let's say this is b and f is sitting on the immediate left of b okay after that b is sitting opposite to c okay first statement is saying b is sitting opposite to c so i have written b is sitting opposite to c okay and d is sitting opposite to e d is sitting opposite to e so here only this this is possible right so d is sitting opposite to e so guys here d is sitting opposite to e that is okay d is sitting opposite to e and here only one is left which is a but the problem is here d or e can come and here d or e can come right so question is saying who is sitting on the immediate left of a so immediate left so this is a and immediate left of a can be e or d nothing can be said for sure like who is sitting immediate left of a fine so here both statement 1 and 2 are not sufficient to answer this question i mean both statement together are not sufficient to answer this question right here option number d will be the right right choice okay everyone fine so this was a simple question you can say but yes you have to take care of this fact that this e and d are sitting opposite to each other so they may be e or d or they may be d or e both right okay so this is like you have to be alert while solving these type of questions all right everyone now let's move to the next question let's come to the next question consider the question and two statements given below question what is the age of manisha all right statement number one manisha is 24 years younger than her mother Okay, so statement number two is not, sorry, statement number one alone is not giving you any clue about the current age of, present age of Manisha. Okay, statement number two alone, five years later, the ages of Manisha and her mother will be in the ratio three to five. So statement number two alone is not giving you any clue about the present age of Manisha. But when we club these two statements together, you can find the answer. Manisha and her mother. So Manisha is like 3 is to 5. So difference is 2. And question is saying it is 24 years. So 1 is equal to 12. And 3 is equal to 36. And this is equal to 60. Right? So after 5 years, the age of Manisha will be 36. So present age of Manisha is 31, 36 minus 5 is 31 years. So today her, I mean Manisha's age is 31 years, right? So both the statements are sufficient to find the answer. Both the statements together are sufficient to find the answer. Here statement number, I mean uh, correct choice is option number C. All right, everyone, fine. Okay, now let's move to the next question. Next question is six lectures A, B, C, D, E, F each of one hour duration are scheduled between 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. Consider the two statements given below. Question is which lecture is in the third period? Which lecture is in the third period? All right. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So which lecture is there in the third period? All right. So read statement number one alone. Lecture F is preceded by A and followed by C. Okay. So from this statement, we cannot say about the third period. Okay. Statement number two. There is no lecture after B. So from this statement alone, we can't say anything about the third period. Right. So statement number one alone is not sufficient. Statement number two alone is not sufficient to find the answer. Okay. And if we club them together, there is no lecture. Statement number two says there is no lecture after B. It means B is the last lecture. Now statement number one, lecture F is preceded by A and followed by C. Lecture F is preceded by A and followed by C. So this will be the order A, F, C. 
so this is like can be AFC AFC or this can be AFC right so third lecture can be C also third lecture can be F also third lecture can be A also so from even if we combine these two statements we are not able to find the answer so both 1 and 2 are not sufficient to answer this question right everyone they are not sufficient to find the answer okay all right now let's move to the next question next question says let abc represent distinct non zero digits suppose x is the sum of all possible three digit numbers formed by abc without repetition okay consider the following statements see everyone this question came last year also and last year also i have solved this question in the very similar manner the way i am going to solve this question right now so abc it's a three digit number so obviously all the possible digits i mean all the possible numbers will be abc so this will be acb and then bac bca and then this will be c a b and then c b a fine so the general form of this number is what 100 a plus 10 b plus c this will be 100 a plus 10 c plus b guys this is 10 b after that this will be 100 b plus 10 a plus c this will be 100 b plus 10 c plus a this will be 100 c plus 10 a plus b and this will be 100 c plus 10 b plus a fine so this will be all the possible numbers which can be formed from the three distinct digits a b c okay after that let a b c represent distinct non zero digits suppose x is the sum of all possible three digit numbers formed by a b c without repetition so when we add them their sum will be x so when we add them here see everyone if we add them so this is 100 a 100 a 200 a 10 a and 10 a this is 20 a then a and a this is 2 a so this is 222 a similarly 222 b similarly 222 c so if we take common 222 so this will be a plus b plus c the sum of all the possible three digit numbers will be 222 a plus b plus c fine question is saying what question is saying a b c represent distinct non-zero digits distinct non-zero so obviously 1 2 3 4 up to 9 a b c will be like this so least a b c can be what least a b c can be 123 right so least a b c can be 123 so least a plus b plus c can be 1 plus 2 plus 3 right so this this can be the least x 222 into 6 this is 1332 so least x can be 1332 right so the four digit least value of x the four digit least value of x is 1332 okay everyone so a is the correct choice and the three digit greatest value of x is 888 the four digit least value of x is so okay in fact guys what is three digit what is four digit that doesn't matter the least value of x will be 1332 and obviously it's a four digit number so least four digit number i mean the least four digit value of x is 1332 only first is correct b won't be correct right here x won't be a three digit number x cannot be a three digit number x will start from 1332 right x cannot be a three digit number x will start from 1332 all right everyone 
so one only will be the correct choice right okay now let's move to the next one next question is next question is saying there is a numeric lock which has a three digit pin the pin contains digits from 1 to 7 there is no repetition of digits the digits in pin from left to right are decreasing order any two digits in the pin differ by at least two how many maximum attempts does it is does how many maximum attempts does one need to find out the pin with certainty all right everyone so here 1 to 7 so pin starts with 7 because they have to be in decreasing manner from left to right right so 7 5 3 is the first thing then 7 5 2 is the second thing second pin then 7 5 1 can be the third after that 7 4 so 7 4 2 and 7 4 1 then 7 3 1 okay so starting from 7 we can have 6 pins now 6 6 4 2 and 6 4 1 okay and 6 3 1 okay so starting from 6 we can have 3 pins and then 5 so 5 3 1 that's it so how many are they there are 6 then 3 and then 1 so total they are 6 plus 3 plus 1 this is 10 10 maximum numbers I mean the maximum uh, how many maximum attempt does one need to find the pin with certainty so 10 maximum attempts are needed to find out the pin with certainty okay all right now let's move to the next question next question is there are eight equidistant point on the circle how many right angled triangles can be drawn using three points as vertices and taking the diameter as one side of the triangle okay fine so everyone here this is the circle and one two three four five six seven eight okay how many right angled triangle can be drawn using points these points as the vertex taking the diameter as one side of the triangle okay diameter how many diameters are possible one two three and four four diameters are possible one two three four four diameters are possible okay so guys if we take first diameter one if we take one diameter first this one if we take one diameter then obviously we can choose vertices number two and we can form the triangle and this triangle will be a right angled triangle because the angle subtended in a semicircle is always a right angle. I repeat, the angle subtended in a semicircle is always a right angle. Okay? So here, this 2, 3 and 4. 3 triangles here and here, like 3 triangles here are possible. 3 this side, I mean 2, 3, 4 and 3 other side, this side are possible. So corresponding to first diameter, we have six triangle corresponding to second diameter we also have six triangle corresponding to third diameter we also have six triangles and corresponding to fourth diameter we also have six triangles so total we have six plus six plus six plus six we have 24 triangles all right everyone total 24 triangles will be possible okay all right now let's move to the next question 24 diameter means 24 triangle means a option is the correct choice all right now let's move to the next question next question says 24 
men and 12 women can do a piece of work in 30 days 24 men and 12 women can do a piece of work in 30 days all right in how many days can 12 men and 24 women do the same piece of work okay guys this question cannot be solved with the given data because there are two unknowns so obviously we need two equations only one equation is given so this question cannot be solved with the given data so here d choice is the correct data is inadequate to draw any conclusion right d option is the correct choice okay now let's move to the next one next question is what is the remainder when this number is divided by 1261 so 91 into 92 into 93 into 94 into 95 into 96 97 98 99 so here they are saying is divided by 1261 so 1261 if you factorize 1261 you will get 13 into 97 See everyone, 1261, the factors of 1261 is 13 into 97. So I'm writing here as 13 into 97. So 97, 97 cancelled, 13, 7 is 91, right? So here, the numerator part is the multiple of denominator part. So obviously the remainder will be 0, right? Numerator is the multiple of the denominator, so remainder is 0, right everyone? So answer is 0, clear? Okay, now let's move to the next question. Next question says, consider the following statements in respect of a rectangular sheet of length 20 cm and breadth 8 cm. Okay, first statement says, it is possible to cut the sheet exactly into 4 square sheets. Okay, second statement says, it is possible to cut the sheet into 10 triangular sheets of equal area guys please uh, be alert here they are saying equal area and here they are saying it is possible to cut the sheet exactly into four square sheets here they are not talking about the exactly area uh, i mean in statement number one they are not saying anything about the equal area but in statement number two they are saying equal area fine so guys let's uh, draw this and check it out so for statement number one, I'm checking it out, right? So this is eight and this is 20. They are saying it is possible to cut the sheet exactly. Exactly means what? No piece of sheet is left out, right? It, it has been cut exactly. Complete sheet uh, should be used, fine. So this is what this is. Okay, this is one square of eight by eight. This is another square of eight by eight. Now, now what happens this is this is 4 and this is 8 fine so what we can do is we can just just make a cut off like this so this is the rectangular sheet of I mean this is the square sheet of 4 by 4 and this is again the square sheet of 4 by 4 right so 1 2 3 4 so here we have 4 squares that is correct so 2 squares will be of size 8 by 8 and 2 squares will be of size 4 by 4, right? So total we have 4 squares, right everyone? So they are saying it is possible, right? Statement number 1 says it is possible. So yes, it is possible to cut the sheet exactly into 4 square sheets. It is possible. Here they are not saying about the equal area, right? Now statement number 2. Let's talk about statement number two. Statement number two says it is possible to cut the sheet into 10 triangular sheets of equal area. 10 triangular sheets of equal area. Okay. So everybody, this is 8 and this is 20. Right. So in 20, we can have like five equal parts of four for each. Okay. So it is like this, right? 
so this is 4 this is 4 this is 4 and this is 4 and this is 4 so now these five parts will be a what will be a rectangle these five will be rectangle of equal area now if we just divide in this rectangle into two equal halves if we divide these rectangles into two equal halves it will be like this right so guys now now 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and 10 now there are 10 equal area ka triangle will be there right these 10 triangle have the equal area fine so here is statement number one question is saying which of the above statements is are correct so here is statement number one is also correct and second is also correct so here c option will be the right choice right both the statements will be correct fine you have to be alert while solving this type of question friends again i'm saying fine now let's move to the next question next question is when 70 percent of a number x is added to another number y the sum becomes 165 percent of the value of y okay it means what 70 percent of x equal to 65 percent of y right because if 65 percent of y is added to y the sum will become 165 percent of y fine so it means 75 percent of x is equal to 65 percent of y so here x is to y will be in the reverse manner so this is 65 is to 70 so this is 13 is to 14 so x is to y will be in the ratio 13 is to 14 and the next condition the next condition is given as when 60% of the number x is added to another number z, 60% of x is added to the number z, the sum becomes 165%. Okay, it means 65% of z. So 70% of x is equal to 65% of z. So x is to z will be in the ratio obviously it is in reverse manner so 65 is to 60 so this is 13 is to 12 right so x is to z is 13 is to 12 so guys here x is to y is to z are in the ratio 13 is to 14 is to 12 right so value of x will be 13 and value of y will be 14 and value of z is 12 just assume it so y is the maximum z is the least and x will be in between right y is the maximum and z is least so a option y is maximum okay a option is the correct choice all right everyone fine now let's move to the next question okay next question is Two candidates X and Y contestant uh, contested an election. 80% of the voter cast their votes and there were no invalid votes. There was no nota option. Okay. X got 56% of the votes cast and won with uh, one by 1440 votes. What is the total number of voters in the voters list? Okay. Guys, votes cast. If x got 56 percent of the vote cost cast x got 56 then obviously two candidates are there x and y then y must have got 44 percent because there is no vote invalid y, right so 44 and 56 the difference is what the difference is 12 percent right so 12 percent is the difference between winner and loser which is given as 1440 right so 1% is equal to what 1% is equal to 120 then 100% is equal to 12,000 but this is the 100% of votes cast right so total 12,000 voting was there on that day right but 12,000 is not the number in the voting list because total 80% voting was there on that on that day so 80% of the voters list is equal to 12,000 
then 100% of the voters list is equal to 12,000 divided by 18,200. So this is 15,000. Right everyone, this is 15,000. Right, this is the answer. Okay everyone, so the correct answer is A option, 15,000. Right? All right, now let's move to the next question. Next question is, what is the smallest number greater than 1000 that when divided by any one of the numbers 6, 9, 12, 15, 18 leaves a remainder 3. Okay, guys, when I mean the given options, when the options, uh, when these numbers are giving the remainder as 3, it means 1060 should be completely divisible by the given numbers. Similarly, 1070 should be completely divisible by the given numbers and 1080 should be completely divisible by the given numbers and 1180 should be completely divisible by the given numbers, right? Okay. So, this 18, right? 18 is there, 9 is there. So, friends, 9. 9 means the sum of the I mean sum of the digits of the number should be the multiple of 9. So 1060 here the sum of the digit is what? 7. So this number won't be divisible by 9. Here the sum of digit is 8. So this is won't be divisible by 9. Here the sum of the digits is 10. This won't be divisible by 9. Only here the sum of the digit is 9. So if only this number is divisible by 9 then obviously rest number are not divisible by 9 then obviously this will be the answer. Right? If three of them are not correct, then obviously uh, this will be like, this will be correct for every number now. Don't check it, right? Okay, C option is the correct choice. Now let's move to the next question. Next question says, let P be a two digit number and Q be the number consisting the same digits written in the reverse order. Okay, if P into Q is 2430, then what is the difference between P and Q? All right. Everyone, first of all, this is xy into yx kind of number and the product is 2430, right? They are saying p is a two digit number, so let's say p is xy and q contains the same digit but in reverse manner. So q will be yx. So p into q, so xy into yx is 2430. So guys, you know what? If in the unit you are getting 0, then it, it must be either 5 into 2 or 5 into 4 or 5 into 6 or 5 into 8. It is like this only, right? Okay. So just start by checking one by one. So 25 into 52, 45 into 54, 65 into 56, 85 into uh, 58, right? So 25 into 52 is 1300. Uh, 40, uh, this 45 into 54 is, yes, this is 2430. Yeah, this is correct. This got matches. Right, so 45 into 54, so xy is 45, yx is 54, what they are asking the difference, difference is 9, right, the answer is, d answer is the correct choice, that's it, okay, alright, okay now let's move to the next question. Next question is consider the following statements in respect of two natural numbers P and Q such that P is a prime number and Q is a composite number. Okay, let's assume P as 5 and Q as 15. Right? P is a prime number and Q is composite number. Okay, question is P into, I mean first statement is P into Q can be odd number. P into Q. Yeah, 15 into 5 is 75. Yeah, it is odd number. 
can be they are saying right they are not saying is they are saying can be so can be means like if it is possible in one condition then obviously it can be true right okay fine q by p can be a prime number so q by p 15 by 5 it is 3 3 is a prime number yeah it is correct so first is correct and second is also correct and they are saying p and q can be a p plus q can be a prime number p plus q okay so just assume p as 2 and q as 21 right 2 is the only even prime number right and q is 21 so 23 p plus q is what 23 23 is also a prime number yeah it is a prime number so third is also correct so all the statements are correct they are saying which of the above statements are correct so all the statements are correct all right everyone fine now let's move to the next question okay now let's move to the next question okay next question is they are saying between 316 and 317 both hour hand and minute hand coincide yeah it is true it is true hour hand and minute hand coincide between 316 and 317 yeah it is true right after that they are saying after that they are saying between 458 and 459 both minute hand and second hand coincide see everyone minute hand and second hand coincide every minute the reason is second hand moves all the time fine so minute hand and uh, second hand coincide in every minute so this is also true so here both the statements are correct right so both the statements are correct okay all right so here c option is the correct choice right c option is the correct choice okay fine after that let's talk about the next question there are two containers x and y x contains 100 ml of milk 100 ml of milk and y contains 100 ml of water 20 ml of milk is transferred from x to y this is x and this is y 100 ml of milk and 100 ml of water okay 20 ml of milk is transferred to y and mix them well and after mixing 20 ml of y is transferred back to x if m denotes the proportion of milk in x and n denotes the proportion of water in y then which of the following is correct see everyone after this operation the proportion of milk in x will be same as the proportion of water of y the proportion of water in y okay so here m is equal to n i repeat after this operation i mean the condition which is given in the equation the milk in x will be same as the water in y okay yeah so here m is equal to n right now let's move to the next question next question is a pie chart gives the expenditure of five on five items a b c d e in a household if b c d if b c d e correspond to 90 50 45 75 respectively what is the percentage expenditure on item a see everyone the total angle of a pie chart is 360 degree fine so here 90 degree 50 degree 45 degree and 75 degree if you add them this is 140 and this is 120 so this is what uh, this is 140 and 120 so this is 260 degree so what is left 100 degree so 100 degree is corresponding to a so they are saying what percentage 
Okay. So if we need to convert this into percentage, so 100 degree divided by 360 into 100. Okay. So this will give you the percentage. So 1010 zero, zero cancel. So this is 5 by 18. So this is 500 by 18 or you can say 250 by 9. So this is 250 by 9 percentage. Okay, the correct answer is 250 by 9. D option is the correct choice. 250 by 9 percentage. All right, everyone. The correct answer is 250 by 9 percent. All right. Now let's move to the next question. Next question is. Next question is 15 into 14 into this is equal to 3 to the power m into n. So actually in factorial 15 we need to find the power of 3. Right. Okay. So this is what 3 into 6 into 9 into 12 into 15. I'm not writing the all the numbers. I have just written the multiples of 3. Right. So this is 3 into 1. This is 3 into 2. This is 3 into 3. This is 3 into 4. This is 3 into 5. Right. So this is 3. I mean, 1 times 3, 1 times 3, 2 times 3, 1 times 3, 1 times 3. Right. Just add all of them. Okay. Just add all of them. So 1 plus 1, 2, 2 plus 2, 4, 4 plus 1, 5, 5 plus 1, 6. So 3 raised to the power m. So here the value of m will be 6. Right. So total 3, I mean the maximum power of 3 which can divide factorial 15 is, is 6. Right. The answer is 6. Okay. Now let's move to the next question. Next question is what is the value of x in the given sequence? Okay, so this is 2, 12, 36, 80, 150 and x. Guys, you know what? This is 1 cube plus 1 square. This is 2 cube plus 2 square. This is 3 cube plus 3 square. This is 4 cube plus 4 square. This is 5 cube plus 5 square. So it has to be 6 cube plus 6 square. Right. So this is 216 plus 36. This is 252. Okay. So this is 252. Right. This is the answer. Okay. So in these type of questions, if if this question is getting clicked, then it is fine. If it is not getting clicked, please don't waste your time behind these type of questions. Right? Okay. Now, next question. Next question is one non-zero digit, one vowel and one consonant from English alphabet in capital are to be used in forming passwords such that each password has to start with a vowel and end with a consonant. How many such passwords can be generated? Okay. Look here. One non-zero digit, one vowel and one consonant. It means it's a three digit password. It has to be start with vowel. Right. Start with vowel and ends with a consonant and in between there is a digit. Right. And that to a non-zero digit. So vowel are what? How many vowels are there? Five. How many digits are there? I mean, how many non-zero digits are there? Nine. How many consonants are there? Twenty-one. Okay. So these many password will be formed. So so they are nine forty-five. Okay, everyone. They are nine forty-five. So this is the answer. Fine. The correct answer is nine forty-five. All right. Now let's move to the next question.
after that the question is there are nine cups placed on a table arranged in equal number of rows and columns out of which six cups contain coffee and three cups contain tea how many ways can they be arranged so that each row should contain at least one cup of coffee okay so everyone here actually nine uh three are three are tea right three contains tea so we have to put them also so just just find three places where three i mean these are the you know these are the arrangements so just pick three uh three places where three uh t can be put fine so out of nine three places will be chosen so this is 9c3 right but in in this 9c3 manner actually will be having those manners also where in any one row all the t will be there so this can be happen i mean this can happen with first row also with second row also or with third row also so those three cases will be subtracted so the answer will be 9c3 minus 3 so 9 into 8 into 7 divided by 1 2 3 three. this is the final answer okay so this is what 3 this is 4 so this is 84 Minus three. This is eighty one. Eighty one is the correct answer. All right. Here, D option is the correct choice. Okay, everyone. D option is the correct choice. Right. Now let's move to the next one. Next question is saying the sum of three consecutive integers is equal to their product. Okay. how many such possibilities are there guys they are saying consecutive integers right integers can be positive also integers can be negative also and and zero is also an integer right so consecutive integers they are talking about so 1 2 3 so 1 plus 2 plus 3 is equal to 1 into 2 into 3 which is 6 fine and minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 is equal to minus 1 into minus 2 into minus 3 which is equal to minus 6 fine and now minus 1 plus 0 plus 1 and minus 1 into 0 into 1 this is what this is 0 fine so here 1 2 3 3 this is the first triplet of consecutive pairs after that minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 this is the second triplet of consecutive integers after that minus 1 Zero and one. This is the third triplet of consecutive integers. So here, guys, the answer is what? Three possibilities are there. Only three. C option is the correct choice. Only three. Fine. So guys, again, uh, this is a simple question, but yes, you need to be alert while solving these type of questions because you have to consider the negative integers as well. You have to con consider zero as well. Fine. You have to consider each and everything. That's what UPSC demands. All right. Okay guys hope you liked this uh, solution fine now let's move to the next question Next question is what is the number of numbers from point x y uh, form point x y where x and y are distinct non zero digits Okay everyone i'll be solving this question without using that uh, decimal fine I don't want to use this decimal this this will confuse me actually so let's say there are numbers from 1 to 100 1 2 3 up to 100 let's say total 100 numbers are there right everyone let's say these are 100 numbers so which number we can't use where zero is coming and a, uh, and a single digit number can't be used so 1 to 9 can't be used and then right so 1 to 9 first just wait i'm doing it step by step so 1 to 9 nine such numbers nine numbers can't be used and then 10 20 30 100 these also can't be used so they are 10 numbers right uh, so 1 to 9 and 
uh, the number with zero they can't be used after that uh, which has both the digits same it means 11 22 33 up to 99 so 11 22 33 up to 99 they are nine numbers so nine such numbers i mean nine numbers can't be used so total 9 plus 9 18 18 plus 10 28 28 numbers should be excluded out of those 100 numbers right so out of these 100 numbers 28 numbers will be excluded so 100 minus 28 the answer is 72 right everyone so 72 numbers are possible right because they are saying distinct non zero digits so obviously 11 22 33 99 they can't be used because both the digits are same and when they are saying non zero so obviously 10 20 30 and 100 they can't be used right and when they are saying non zero so obviously point 0 0.01 can't be used point 0 0.02 can't be used up to point 0 0.09 can't be used so that's why we have removed a single digit number also fine so total 28 numbers will be excluded so 100 minus 28 the answer is 72 okay everyone fine now the next question next question is the average weight of abc is 40 kg so a plus b plus c is 40 into 3 which is 120 kg right so sum of a plus b plus c sum of abc the weight sum of the weights of abc will be 120 kg that is correct after that the sum of the weights of b d e so b plus d plus e that is 42 into 3 which is 126 kg right everyone okay so when we add them so guys here b will be added two times please mind it when we add them b will be added two times so a plus b plus c plus d plus e and extra b i'm writing here this is what 120 plus 126 this will be what 246 right everyone so sum of a plus b plus c plus d plus e and b one more b is equal to 256 after that the question is saying and the weight of f is equal to the weight of b so b can be replaced with f so friends here a plus b plus c plus d plus e plus f is equal to 246 right so sum of the weights of a to f is equal to 246 kg right we need to find the average so obviously average i mean so this sum will be divided by the numbers of people this is 6 so this is 41 kg right everyone the answer is 41 kg okay all right so guys this test paper is over right now we need to talk about our offerings so unjust what unjust offers you guys this time we are coming with csat foundation program which is a long term program for 2023 students those who are targeting csat to, i mean uh, upsc 23 so this exam this course is for those candidates right they may join it and we are coming with sociology optional also ethics crash course and ethics foundation program and and the flagship program of our will be gs foundation right so we are coming with gs foundation also okay everyone so these are the offerings that unjust has for you right and this is our uh, contact information we have a telegram channel telegram slash unjust and this is our web website unjust.com and if you have any inquiry you want to talk to us so uh, you can call us anytime the number is very easy for you this is 9613192021 right 9613192021 okay everyone so guys uh, this paper was actually a simple paper i mean uh, i won't say this was a much simple paper but yes this was not that tough i mean in 2021 the paper was really tough this paper was not that tough they were i mean upsc trying uh, to do the damage control this time so this paper is not that tough so guys hope you all have done well in this paper and uh, 
uh, uh, once again a disclaimer that maybe all the answers of mine are not correct fine but still i have tried my level best to give you the best solution fine thanks for watching everyone thank you thanks for watching thank you